Greetings in Christ. It's the third Sunday after Pentecost. Glad to see everyone here. Please be sure to mark your attendance using the attendance pads located at the end of the pew. The order of service is printed for you today. We follow that service along. The first hymn is Come Holy Spirit. The Lord has gathered us in the truth faith. Oh, come, let us worship him. We stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God,
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives power to become the children of God and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Remember your mercy, O Lord. Remember your mercy and love. Remember your mercy, O Lord. Remember your mercy and love. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, your Son Jesus triumphed over the prince of demons and freed us from bondage to sin. Help us to stand firm against every assault of Satan and enable us always to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday after Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 3. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, 
and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. O Lord, have mercy upon us. the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. O Lord, have mercy upon us.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he cast out the demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man that indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. O Lord, have mercy upon us. We confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. Thank you. 
Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Here again, a few verses from today's epistle. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. Back in the day, the Roman Empire was a large territory that spanned areas in Europe, Northern Africa, and Western Asia. At the height of its existence, the empire was the most extensive political, military, and social structure in Western civilization. Prior to the year 313, rulers of the empire, called emperors, they didn't tolerate Christianity. In fact, emperors persecuted Christians. Emperors killed Christians. Two Christians at the receiving end of this evil persecution were named Perpetua and Felicity. In the year 203, Roman officials arrested them and three friends during a wave of violent persecution. Why were they arrested? The emperor had ordered Christians to sacrifice to Roman gods. To this order, Perpetua, Felicity, and friends replied, We are Christians. We cannot sacrifice to the gods. Enraged at their response, the Roman governor sent them to prison. The Roman governor gave these Christians several opportunities to change their minds. Sacrifice to the gods because the emperors have ordered it. It is more proper that we sacrifice to God, not to idols. Over and over again, at one point, the Roman governor commanded that Felicity and Perpetua be brought before him. To Felicity, he said, Girl, show yourself mercy, lest you, racked by the worst kind of torments, be robbed of the joy of this life and the splendor of the light. Felicity responded, I wish to reach eternal life and pray perennial splendor through ephemeral torments, meaning I wish to reach heaven through short-lived afflictions. She could go through the afflictions knowing they were short-lived. She knew the goal was greater than this life. Perpetua was no different. Family members even pleaded with Perpetua. Her parents, her brothers, her husband, even with their baby boy in hand, they all came forward begging her to bow down to the Roman gods. But she and others persevered in the Christian faith. They persevered to the point that one day, to the cheers of non-Christians seeking entertainment, these believers were set in the middle of an amphitheater, naked and bound with their hands behind their backs. Starving lions and bears quickly brought about these Christians' eternal glory. About these two women in particular, it's been written that they showed fortitude, determination, and remarkably even joy at the prospects of public humiliation and suffering. That together, they clung to heavenly hope. Heavenly hope. Their death date was March 7th, 203. We remember these martyrs on their death date. Lutheran service book on its annual commemoration calendar for March 7th includes these women who died with heavenly hope, who died 
trusting the words of today's epistle for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are unseen. Heavenly hope. Today's epistle reading is the second of six Sundays in a row in which the appointed epistle is from 2 Corinthians. Last week, we learned that Paul wrote 2 Corinthians to defend his apostleship, for he was under attack. A group of Corinthians sought to turn the court of public opinion against Paul. Paul responded to these attacks by humbly referring to himself as an easily broken jar of clay. He wrote of his suffering that we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake. Remember last week, we learned that Paul recognized, he he had a very profound outlook on his baptism. He recognized that he baptized into Christ, physically bore, he embodied, he took on the crucified Jesus. And therefore, Paul took on a state of deadness, a deadness which the persecution he faced for preaching the gospel to the Corinthians, a deadness the persecutions he faced revealed. At the same time, however, Paul also understood that his baptism into Christ meant that his body would also manifest the life of Jesus, and that's a resurrected life, an eternal life, An eternal life that gave Paul heavenly hope. Heavenly hope moved him to regard the present attacks and persecution he faced as light, momentary affliction. Heavenly hope moved those Christian martyrs to view the amphitheater's lions as a light, momentary affliction. And heavenly hope moves you to endure whatever attacks and persecutions come your way for following Jesus. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. Heavenly hope. We all need heavenly hope because light momentary affliction is something we all face. Martin Luther described the reason why we all face light momentary affliction. He described the reason this way in the large catechism. We who would be Christians must surely expect to have the devil with all his angels and the world as our enemies, and must expect that they will inflict every possible misfortune and grief upon us. For where God's word is preached, accepted, or believed, and bears fruit, there the holy and precious cross will also not be far behind. The devil and his angels inflict every possible misfortune and attack upon you because the devil wants to prevent you from believing in Jesus. Persecution is an attack designed to scare you away from confessing Jesus. Facing hardship is also another attack designed to get you to turn away from confessing Jesus. But consider these attacks as light momentary afflictions. They're light because they lead to an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Light afflictions, but weighty glory. Seems to me that we live just the opposite way, as if afflictions are weighty and glory is light. When I think of weights, I think of burden, of heaviness. I think of morning workouts at Planet Fitness with my friend Jason. I think of sweat. I think of pain. 
I think of attacks for confessing Christ. I think of bodies groaning under the curse of the fall. I think of God's eternal, I think of God's present punishment for our sin. When I hear the word light, I think of a bed sheet or a feather. I think of happiness. I think of eternal life. Eternal life to me is light because it's burden free. But Paul thinks differently, and he changes our perspective. He who bore the deadness of Jesus in his body at all times wants us to see the deadness we carry as light. Light as a bedsheet. Light as a feather. Light as in something that is only for the moment and eventually blows away. In contrast, eternity with Christ is weighty, weighty in a good way, weighty as in something that is permanent. Your struggles in this life are light, and the hope of eternity with Jesus is weighty. This change in perspective is based on heavenly hope. Hope based on the resurrection. A hope that belonged to Paul because baptism incorporated him into Jesus' resurrection. That he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. Physical last day resurrection is key to your heavenly hope. For you are all baptized into Christ, so therefore share Paul's outlook. For looking to things we see physically in the present leads to despair and worry. Despair and worry come our way, since things seen include death, sin, persecution, Attacks, scarcity and lack, sickness and the like. Led by the Holy Spirit, look to things our physical eyes cannot see now, but things the eyes of faith do see. Look to eternity. Look to resurrection. Baptized into Christ, look with heavenly resurrection last hope. For he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. In his writings, Martin Luther occasionally made mention of two women, Agnes and Agatha. They were Christians Agnes was born in Rome shortly before 313, shortly before the time Christians were tolerated. At age 12, Agnes of Rome was martyred in the great persecution of Roman Emperor Diocletian. Agatha was born in Sicily. The command to worship came to her, the command to worship idols, that is. She refused. My courage and my thought be so firmly founded upon the firm stone of Jesus Christ that for no pain it may not be changed. Then the ruler put her in a dark prison. It's been written that she processed to the prison as if she was going to a wedding. Agatha of Sicily, age 22, martyred in 253 in the persecution of Emperor Decius. Going to a wedding. She went to her prison cell as if she were going to a wedding. Luther read that description. He read about the life of Agnes and Agatha. He read the description about Agatha's torture and that phrase, going to a wedding, struck him. So when Luther wrote of Agnes and Agatha, he mentioned their joyfulness on the way to torment, their dancing to death. Borrowing from Pastor Brian Wolf Mueller's commentary, what struck out to Luther, and should too strike out to us as well, was their cheerfulness in the midst of such mistreatment and torture. 
They surpassed courage. They rejoiced in the midst of terror. They danced to death. This is the work of faith, giving the martyrs a different heart, mind, and courage. The Holy Spirit, who both led Jesus to temptation and raised him from the dead, made them to be new creations. They were not of this world and the things of this world, not bound to this life, but free to live and free to die. Eternal life took hold of them, and the grip of life so tight that the grip of death did not frighten them at all. Agnes and Agatha, Perpetua and Felicity, Paul, countless others, they all lived with heavenly hope, resurrection hope, hope grounded on God's only begotten Son, Jesus, who was born of a virgin, who was delivered up for our trespasses, raised for our justification. They all faced their earthly struggles as if they were going to a wedding. And what a wedding did they go to? <laughs> they went to the marriage feast of the Lamb and His kingdom, which has no end. On the basis of Jesus Christ, resurrected from dead, in this Christian faith, the Holy Spirit sustains in you through the preaching of the gospel and through the Lord's Supper and even baptismal remembrance. Regard whatever affliction comes your way as a light, momentary affliction, preparing for you an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as you look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are unseen. For he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us into his presence. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the one true faith until life everlasting. As the offerings are brought forward, we stand and sing the offertory, Create in me a clean heart, O God. of all good, our gifts we bring you now. Use them, your holy purpose to fulfill. Tokens of love and pledges they shall be that our whole life is offered to your will. Amen. In our prayers today, we highlight baby Tilly, Michael and Rachel Paloon's granddaughter. She is improving in health. She is out of the hospital, free from infection at this time. Today is her baptism day. So in Cleveland, Ohio today, Tilly is receiving the new birth of water and the Spirit. So we pray to God that he keep her infection free and uh, give thanks to God for baptism, the work of baptism in her life. We pray uh, for Rhoda Bowman as she recovers from surgery at home. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Each of the petitions will end this way. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, your response is amen.
Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts that he may rule and direct us according to your will. Comfort us in all our temptations and afflictions. Defend us from all error and lead us into all truth that we, being steadfast in faith, may increase in all good works and in the end obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal Lord God, grant complete recovery to your servants Rhoda and Don, who have recently undergone surgery. Abide with those who are sick, especially Alexandria, Walter, Juanita, Perry, Michael, Andrea, Sarah, Celia, Robin, Tom, Bernadette, George, and Bonnie. Deal compassionately with them and bless them with your healing power. Grant your homebound servants, Jane, Stefan, Ruth, Ann, Janice, Helen, Evelyn, Sharon, Ron, Ruth, Mel, Sharon, and Billy. Both the desire and the will to spend their days as obedient children, trusting in your goodness and remembering with thankfulness your mercies. Fix the eyes of all for whom we pray on the eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison when at last you will raise us and bring us with you into his presence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, Father in heaven, watch over baby Tilly. Thank you for restoring her health. Keep her free from infection. We praise you that on this day you have granted her the new birth in holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. Grant that according to your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord God, Heavenly Father, your Son gathered the little children to himself that he might bless them. Strengthen the parents of our congregation that they may faithfully bring up their children in the nurture and instruction of the Lord by a life of prayer and devotion to you and your word. Bless the work of our preschool and of our upcoming summer music camp that the children might be led into the Savior's loving arms and grow to lead godly lives to the praise and honor of Christ's holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Holy Word preached. A few quick announcements. Tomorrow is the voters' meeting at 7 o'clock. All voters are encouraged to be present. If you are a thriving member, thriving financial member, and if you're willing to use your thriving action grants towards projects for our Redeemer, please let me or Jenny or Julia know. We can keep a running list of members that we can call upon when it's time to get an action grant for a project that we're embarking upon here at church. When you exit today, you'll notice two bulletin boards with pieces of paper tacked onto them. There's one board for our upcoming summer music camp. You'll see, again, a reminder about that camp in your bulletin. There are colorful brochures you could take home with you to share if you're so inclined. But we do need help with snacks, people providing the food for the snack time. So on the one bulletin board, you'll see items that we need donated. So if you could please look at that board today, pick a couple to take home, bring it back to church on the 23rd of June. There's also a similar bulletin board for the card ministry. So again, be sure to look at those bulletin boards and help out where you're able. That's all the announcements I have. Do you have any announcements? Pastor Boyce Claire will be back next Sunday. Have a great day in the Lord.